Hello, hello, good evening, guys, and welcome to the class. So for, <clears throat> sorry, for this evening, we once again are going to continue working. And uh, well, we have to finish up the three word phrasal verbs, which is the topic we were dealing with last night. We also have a conversation that I considered that is going to turn out to be very, very interesting. And we also have, well, the last section, which um, we're going to be covering this evening, which is going to be making suggestions. Those are the three things that we're aiming to do. However, we also have in storage um, to check on some of the exercises we have developed thus far, or we are supposed to have developed because as you guys um, were able to read earlier this afternoon, tomorrow we're going to be having um, a checkpoint and uh, we're going to be evaluated and see how far we have come in the completion of the platform activities. So we're going to be covering uh, what is section number three. I hope you guys have already advanced a lot in section four. And if you happen to have any questions, as always, it's going to be a pleasure to clarify them. Now, I hope you guys are doing great. That is something I haven't really been asking you guys that much. But for this evening, I have two different things or two different um, starting activities. The first one is that I would like to know if you have an idea on the different ways you know you, you have in, available in English to ask someone how they are doing or how are you. I want you to provide me with questions different from how are you, but to ask the same thing, how are you? So, for example, instead of saying how are you, the most common one that I will use is how are you doing? So what other questions or what other ways of asking that do you guys know? I would like to hear from um, Melissa. Do you know any um, alternate form of asking how are you? Um, only I uh look uh, for example uh, doing well or when is a uh, um, saludo mm -hmm. i hope you are doing well but i don't know okay so we're gonna go with are you doing well okay this is a pretty straightforward question because here we're um, somehow assuming that the person is doing well and we're only asking to check if the person is doing well, but that will be an option. Are you doing well? Um, so that's one of the, of the many ways in which we can ask instead of how are you? Okay, um, how about Emma? Do you know a way different from are you doing well and how are you to ask someone on how they are doing? No, I don't know any other way. Okay, so we don't have any other option from you. How about um, Evelyn? Do you know, Evelyn, any other way different from are you doing well or how are you to ask on somebody's estate? How's everything going? There we go. That's a really good one. How's everything going? How's everything going pretty cool so that's another one that is kind of common to ask how's everything going um this one has a shorter version you can go ahead and ask how's everything if you like and it's going to be basically the same you can ask um anyone how's everything and the question is going to be understood in the very same way as how's everything going the, the, the fact that we are going at the end is just to um, close the question and not be too lazy at the time of, of speaking, but we can go simply with how's everything. All right. Um, how about you, Joel? Do you have any other example apart from are you doing well? How's everything going? And how are you to ask the same kind of question? Good evening. Good evening. Um, yes. Um... How have you been? Okay. And, and phrases like what's up or what's new, could it 
work as well, I think. Yes, they cut it. They also cut it. All right. So what's up? That's another version. And what's new? Um, very good. So those uh, are other three options we have. How have you been? Oh, wait, wait, I'm going to explain you guys in a little bit. Before I explain that, I would like to know if we have any new way of saying um, something related to these questions from Beatriz. So do you know, Beatriz, another version of asking someone, how are you? Um, maybe I hope, um, I hope you are well. Okay. Um, that is a desire, mostly. Instead of a question, that is more like a, a, like a desire. Sí, eso funcionaría más como una, una oración. Sí es cierto que funciona como saludo, pero más como un estilo oración, no tanto como una pregunta. Y la que podríamos hacer, por ejemplo, para poder usar algo similar, sería la primera que, que teníamos acá. Are you doing well? Sí, en ese caso, o sea, estamos preguntando, ¿verdad? Si estás bien. Sí, are you doing well? Pero... Okay. Uh -huh. ok, teacher. It's ok, ok. Muy bien. Ahora, vamos entonces en orden. Tenemos un montón de formas de poder preguntarle a alguien, how are you? La primera es, pues, simplemente, ¿verdad? Cómo se tiene, ¿sí? La más sencilla, la más conocida. How are you? ¿Cómo estás? Esa es muy común, pero, o sea, no es la única que ustedes van a escuchar. That's the first one. How are you? Then we have um, how, and this is one that confuses people a lot. How are you doing? How are you doing? This is a question that many people tend to answer by replying with the activity that they are performing at that moment. But this is basically the same as asking, how are you? How are you doing? The only thing is that is more in the present, like right now, how are you doing? Like at this moment, how do you feel? Because the how are you thing is something you can ask like in general, like how are you um, in the last couple of days, in the last week? Like, how do you feel right now? But, or, I mean, how do you feel taking that into account as well, like the last week? But in how are you doing, you're being more specific about this moment. Like at this point right now, what is your feeling? Like how would you um, describe your feelings at this specific point in time? So that's how are you doing? Then we will have something like, um, are you doing well? Which is a very good example. Are you doing well? Um, so we will go with that. Or we also have, are you doing okay? Which is basically the same. Are you doing okay? Are you doing okay? And the only difference or the only problem that I will find with these two versions is the fact that you're assuming that the person is good or is doing good. Um, therefore, they are not always recommended to be used. Because when you ask, how are you, you're not assuming anything. You just want to know the state of being of that person. But if you ask, are you doing well? Then by putting the, the, um, the adjective well there in the question, you are basically asking this person to let you know that they are doing well. This is not an open question, but this is like a, more like a forced question to some extent. Um, then we have, how's everything going? Or how's everything? As I as I mentioned, that is the shorter version. We can ask how's everything going or how's everything. That's another one that can be used, but in this case, it's a question you can ask someone with whom you have some kind of deal, with whom you have had a conversation in which they have shared that they are going through something. So this is not a question you're going to ask like the first question, the first option would be something like, how are you doing? Instead of how's everything going? Because how's everything going is going to be used to refer to a specific situation you have already talked about before. So let's say, um, I don't know, one of your family members is, is sick and you told your friend that this family member is not feeling too well, then when that friend sees you again, he's probably going to ask you, hey, tell me, how's everything going? And 
you can make it even more specific and mention the member of the family. Let's say it's let's say this it's a cousin for this example. So they could ask you, how's everything going with your cousin? So when you ask how's everything going, it's supposed to um, or you are supposed to explain the situation like if you have already talked about it and you have provided some details to this person about the state of being of your family member, which is the example we're putting here, um, then you're going to explain again, like the whole evolution that has happened in the last couple of days on that situation. Entonces, esa se puede traducir o entender, ¿verdad? ¿Cómo está todo? Pero en realidad se va a utilizar mayormente cuando hemos tenido una conversación previa acerca de algo con alguien. O sea, si esta persona nos ha, por ejemplo, hemos platicado, como les decía, acerca de un familiar que esté enfermo. Y luego nos preguntan, how's everything going? Y si son específicos, ¿verdad? Acerca de el familiar que hemos mencionado. Entonces esta pregunta, pues lo que va a requerir no va a ser necesariamente mi estado de ánimo, sino puedo decir, por ejemplo... Todo bien y luego explicar, ¿verdad? Cómo es, ha evolucionado la situación de lo que estábamos hablando. O sea, puede ser, no necesariamente algo malo, puede ser, por ejemplo, que ustedes estaban, eh, se acaban de mudar, ¿sí? You just moved to a new city and then your friend uh, is texting you and asks you, hey, how's everything going? Entonces está preguntando acerca de la situación, cómo está yendo todo, ¿verdad? Con, pues, tu nueva realidad, el hecho de que te, te mudaste. Um, si no, puede ser incluso, um, qué sé yo, vas a, no sé, cambiar algo en tu casa, vas a mover algún mueble. Entonces, si le contaste a tu amigo, a tu familiar, y te preguntan, hey, how's everything going? Entonces, se refiere, ¿verdad? O esta pregunta se va a referir no necesariamente a ti como persona, sino a la situación que tal vez hayan podido conversar anteriormente. Sí se puede usar para preguntarle a alguien cómo está, pero en caso que haya habido alguna conversación acerca de algo antes, entonces esta conversación, esta pregunta más bien, se va a entender ¿verdad? más referida hacia eso que hacia ti específicamente. Si no hay nada que hayan conversado antes, entonces... La, la pregunta pues se puede quedar hasta contestarla como yo me siento, ¿verdad? O sea, entenderla igual que un how are you. Por eso se, se coloca acá, porque se puede entender así, pero no es todo el significado de la pregunta. Ok, then the next two, what's up and what's new. Those two are very informal. Those are supposed to be used with people that you know, with people that you are close with. So what's up and what's new, or we also have the other one, which is what's popping. What's popping, which means basically the same. Sí, what's up, what's new, what's popping, se refiere a, básicamente traducirlo como qué onda. Sí, qué onda. So, what's up. Sí, que, o sea, podemos entenderlo, alguien lo puede traducir en español como qué tal, pero no necesariamente. Este se va a entender así porque, o sea, como les digo, es mucho más coloquial, es mucho más para utilizarla con, la, con los amigos cercanos, con personas con quienes somos cercanos. So, that's what's up. Same for what's new, sí, que hay de nuevo. Recordamos a... Uh, Box Bunny, ¿verdad? Siempre preguntando, what, ¿qué hay de nuevo, viejo? Sí, entonces por ahí sería, what's new, dude? Um, la siguiente, what's popping? Lo mismo, ¿verdad? O sea, ¿qué está pasando? Sí, o que podemos entenderla más bien como, ¿qué onda? Popping es el hecho de poder como presentarse en el momento como algo que puede estar estallando, así como los, um, las palomitas de maíz. Entonces, popping. That's what's popping. And here we have one that is going to be very formal. See, very formal. How have you been? This one was provided to us by Joel. And how have you been? See, esta es una muy formal. Esta pregunta no se va a hacer necesariamente, ¿verdad? Con la familia. No es algo que, o sea, todo el tiempo se vaya a estar utilizando. Cuando ustedes preguntan, how, how have you been? O sea, es más bien como con un compañero del trabajo que no ven hace tiempo. Eso es otro detalle que se utiliza con personas que no han visto ustedes tal vez en un tiempo. No solamente con gente nueva, sino que también con alguien a quien pueda que tengan un rato de no ver. Pero principal, principalmente será en ambientes formales. Si sí, ustedes pueden preguntarle a su jefe, hey boss, how have you been? Sí, ¿Cómo ha estado? Un visitante que venga de otro país. Entonces, si ustedes quieren preguntarle ¿verdad? Um, cómo ha estado todo, Then you ask, how have you been? Así que esa será la forma de acercarse a alguien con una manera un poco más formal. How have you been? And then one of my favorite ones, the one that covers everything, it's going to be how's life? 
¿sí? Esta es otra que se puede utilizar, eh, House Life. Esta de House Life se va a usar más bien con personas cercanas que no vemos en, hace mucho tiempo. Específicamente, por lo que me gusta mencionar esta, es porque es la pregunta que le puedes hacer a tu ex. Sí, por decir algo, o sea, hace tiempo que no lo ves, hace tiempo que no sabes acerca de él o ella. Entonces, y te lo encuentras por ahí y le quieres preguntar cómo está, ¿verdad? Tal vez no te interese, o sea, en general, cómo esté, pero si le preguntas, ¿how's life? De alguna forma, eh, esa pregunta se puede interpretar de muchas maneras. O sea, se puede interpretar como, o sea, ¿cómo has estado en todo este tiempo? Sí, o sea, ¿cómo ha ido la vida después de mí? Por decir algo. Um, puede ser también, por ejemplo, o sea, ¿qué tal te trata la vida? Como si interesado, ¿verdad? En saber si tal vez tiene ya alguien nuevo o cosas así. Entonces, esa pregunta es bastante específica para eso. Casi nunca se usa en otros términos. A veces sí, con amigos que también, o sea, que tienes mucho tiempo de no ver, entonces si quieres conocer, ¿verdad? ¿Qué ha sido de sus vidas desde la última vez que se vieron? También podría ser House Life. Pero no le vas a estar preguntando a la gente que ves todos los días, hey, How's Life? Porque, o sea, no necesariamente, ¿verdad? Se va, se va a poder contestar de manera correcta, porque pues en esta lo que se necesita más bien son algunos detalles de bastante tiempo, cosas que hayan pasado durante este periodo, ¿verdad? En el cual no nos hemos visto. So, how's life? Bueno, esas son entonces algunas. I'm, oh, sorry, Joel. Yes, I, I had a question, teacher. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. No, no Or problem. The, how, how are you doing? I have a question about this one because I remember I used to watch this circle on Friends mm -hmm. and one of the characters there, Joy, he used to say a lot, how you doing? How you doing, so yeah. He, yeah, he eliminated the word R. So R. I was wondering, it's, is it because it's, in, because it's informal, because it's informal. But is so, it yeah. common in, in a slang? Yes, it's very common. How you doing? To eliminate the, the, yes. the R. Yeah, eliminating the um the the verb be is very very common. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. For example, in like a family, I even have a video from the time I was living in the U.S. where I can hear the the dad in the house asking, "How you doing? How you? I mean, um, no, how how you feeling? How you feeling? That's the one. How you feeling? So the R is very com. Uh, I mean. Yeah, very commonly eliminated from these questions. So it's going to be very common that you guys get to hear phrases like that. Instead of using the R, which is like the proper way, just eliminating some sections. So how you doing? It's something very usual. And yeah, it kind of sounded uh, or it rang a bell very quickly when you said uh, friends. I remember right away um, my first years in college when I was always watching friends. And also listening to Joey asking the same question over and over and over again. So yeah, yeah. how you doing? Sí, es una de las más comunes las frases de, de Joey. All right. Um, so uh, the next thing that I was going to mention is the fact that there can be many other ways in which you can ask someone how they are doing. But here you have plenty, I will say. And now you will know if people ask you something like the ones that we have Um, been looking at this evening, then you're going to have knowledge that they are asking on your state of being. And please, 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 please remember when somebody asks you how, how you doing or how are you doing, they are not asking you for what you are doing. They're asking you for a how, ¿sí? Porque eso es algo que muy a menudo sucede. Eh, aquí me ha pasado casi con todos los grupos que he tenido cuando les pregunto en algún momento how you doing a veces me dicen oh I'm in a class o algunos dicen oh, I'm having dinner teacher o sea no están comiendo verdad con la cámara apagada y comiendo entonces I'm, I'm having some pupusas pero eh, contestan o sea con la actividad que están desarrollando y no con cómo se sienten sí siempre que sea con how no necesariamente vamos a contestar con algún verbo o con alguna actividad, sino con un um, with a feeling, ¿sí? o sea, con cómo nos sentimos. Y ese es otro tema. Para poder contestar eso, existen un montón de formas también. Ahora, les voy a preguntar a cada uno una vez y por favor les voy a pedir que traten de ofrecer su mejor respuesta. O sea, algo distinto a simplemente solo decir I'm okay o I'm fine o I'm good. Vamos a tratar de ofrecer una distinta. Tal vez mañana eh, 
hablemos un poco acerca de eso al principio, ¿verdad? De las diferentes formas que existen para poder contestar a este tipo de preguntas. So how are you doing? Tanto de forma positiva como de forma neutral, así como también de forma negativa, porque, bueno, es necesario conocerlo. So, uh, I'm going to do it in order. Emma, tell me, how are you doing? I'm doing amazing. All right. So there we have it. I'm doing amazing. That's a proper way to answer this question. I'm doing amazing. Now, something we could change there is, for example, I'm doing amazingly. That's something that we get to hear a lot. And mostly in, um, in British things or in, in, with the British accent, it's very common to hear people answering, I mean, Uh, yeah, answering, I'm doing amazingly, because that is like a, an exaggeration of the fact that you're doing amazing, which means that you're doing even better than amazing. But for this case, we're only going to leave it at, I'm doing amazing. Very good. How about Joel? How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, teacher. You. Very good. Thank you very much for asking, and I'm actually just holding up. All right. Um, I'm doing pretty good I'm doing pretty good there we go so that's another way in which you can answer to this question um, in the case of Evelyn how are you doing Evelyn I'm doing great all right there we go I'm doing great I'm doing great now I want you guys to get creative the last two Melissa how are you doing Melissa I feel great. Okay, I feel great. Very good. A little change from the typical I doing that we were having over here. So I feel great. That's a good one. And last but not least, Beatriz, how are you doing at this time? Very well, thank you. I'm oh. excited, but very good. Okay, very well. Thank you. A little tired. Lo voy a poner todo porque sí. A little tired, but, <laughs> but really good. Muy bien. Yo aquí soy como los que están en, en los juzgados, traduciendo exactamente todo. All right, so that's what we got. Now, what about the one that I provided? Hay formas distintas, ¿sí? Por ejemplo, el caso que yo les haya preguntado, how are you doing? No significa que es necesario, ¿verdad? Siempre contestar con I'm doing, ¿sí? Por ejemplo, vimos cuando... Um, Melissa contestó, I feel great, es un pequeño cambio y no necesariamente, verdad, está mal, sino que a veces es incluso mejor eh, contestar de esa forma porque así tenemos un, um, demostramos como un poquito más de naturalidad a la hora de contestar. En mi caso yo tengo una frase y si ustedes pueden mañana o durante el resto de la noche pueden buscar, verdad, más frases como estas en las cuales ustedes no necesariamente Dejen saber al 100% cómo están. Yo la que siempre uso sería la del just hanging in there. Sí, entonces les voy a enviar just hanging in there. Que es una, una bastante común. Ustedes la pueden ver incluso hasta en posters. Eh, cuando colocan este tipo de frases hanging in there. Y a lo que se refiere solo es algo así como decir solo aguantando. O sea, solo pues pasando por la vida, ¿sí? sin necesidad de decir algo bueno o algo malo, ¿verdad? No estoy diciendo que me siento mal, tampoco estoy diciendo que me siento bien. Just hanging in there, ¿sí? Um, Joel. It's about this same question, how are you doing? I don't know if I can mix a, a, a idiom and, for example, a sentence, an answer could it be, everything's going smooth sailing, which means, Could it, could it yes. be? Yes, yes, sir. Anytime. Yes, you can always do that, which will also sound way more natural. So if you, if you answer that way, that's going to sound completely natural. So everything is going um, wind sailing, you said, right? It's smooth sailing. Oh, it's smooth sailing. All right. So everything is going smooth sailing. Yes, that will be a very, very good way to answer if somebody ever asks you on how you are doing. Um, all right, so that's then what we have from these questions. Now, I don't know if you guys have it clear or if you would like to clarify anything else regarding um, these questions we have been looking at 
or are we ready to move on into the topic for this evening? Here so far. Okay, so I think we are ready then to move on. I was supposed to ask you a question and probably I'm gonna have to save it for later because I wanted to, um, I wanted to know uh, something that is not really that important, but at least I was gonna make you guys speak for a little bit. I was gonna ask you um, on who is your, wait, no. What is your favorite food and how did it become your favorite? But we can talk about food later. Um, so, as I mentioned, making suggestions, that's the main topic we're gonna be covering. Just a little refreshment from these ones. Remember the three word phrasal verbs, the broken up with, when we're gonna use it when we end a relationship with someone, mostly if it's a romantic relationship. Um, come up with, we're gonna use it when somebody has had an idea or has figured something out. Looking forward to, we use this one when we are excited about something that is about to happen or that is supposed to happen. Cut down on, when we reduce the amount of something that we either consume or we have with us. Keep up with, this one, we're gonna use it in two different occasions. One, we're gonna use it when we are um, performing well on a situation when we are doing what we are expected to do. And the other one that is relatively new is going to be when we're always up to date on what something or who, uh, wait, or on what someone is doing. So keep up is going to be used in either of those two situations. Then put up with, when you are talking with put up, we are going to be referring to holding on to something or to um, basically going against the challenge. So put up with, then get along with. We're gonna use get along with when we talk or describe um, how our relation with someone is. And most oftenly when we have a good relation with someone. So get along with. Of course, you can always say, I don't get along with someone. And in that case, you are putting this as a negative statement. And that is going to mean that you don't have a good relationship with that person. And the last one is going to be take care of. Take care of is a phrasal verb we use to talk about when someone has to be very cautious or who has to be aware of a situation. And of course, as it mentions, or as it has been mentioned, they have to take care of that situation. All right. So. These are the ones from last night, the ones that I brought for you guys. And I just also wanted to repeat them for a bit. Look down on. Remember what we're going to use this one for? Look down on is going to be used when somebody um, gives you the edge. When they don't necessarily um, place you in a position that you considered you deserve. So that's going to be look down on when you feel like people don't like you in a specific place or when you also um, put aside an offering that is also going to be seen sometimes as a put down, I mean, sorry, as a look down on. All right, then get away from. Get away from is when you put distance in between you and a certain um, situation or location. So get away from. Uh, then, we have leave up to. Leave up to is the one we were trying to explain um, last night. And leave up to is when you are trying to do your best or when you do your best to prove that you have what is expected of you. Or also um, when you yourself want to prove that you are capable of doing something. So you can leave up to your own dreams. If you have dreams and you want to make them um, true, then you have to push hard. You have to put a lot of effort so you can live up to your own dreams. Now, the get away with is the one we're going to use when we have committed some kind of mischief and nobody finds out, or at least we don't get in any trouble if people find out about the things we have done. So that's get away with. Then look up to is when you admire someone. Instead of look down, remember look down was to um, depreciate someone. 
And look up is when you look into admiration at someone or at something. And of course, I mentioned to you guys that you can also use it in a similar way to looking forward to, but the look up to one is a little bit more, more stronger and also related to um, goals that you may have. So something you want to achieve like really, really hard, something you have set yourself to, um, to do your best or to achieve it at a specific time, that is also going to be understood as a look up to. All right, any questions you may have about the three word phrase or verbs? ¿Alguna duda que se nos haya quedado todavía en cómo los podemos usar? ¿O ya tenemos eh, claro, claro la forma en, lo que, en la cual los vamos a poder utilizar? Bueno, parece que aquí casi nunca surgen dudas, así que muy bien. Vamos a seguir entonces. Now we have, I need a date. So from the start, así desde el principio, ¿verdad? desde que vemos el tema, I think it's going to be very, very interesting. So I need a date. That is the title of this conversation. And here we're going to have two people taking part of it. It's going to be James and Mike. Those are the two persons who will be um, having a section in this conversation. The conversation then should go as following. This is so depressing. I haven't had a date since Angela broke up with me. What can I do? What about looking through the personal ads on the internet? That's how I met Amy. Actually, I've tried that, but the people you meet are always different from what you expect. Well, why don't you join an online dating service? A friend of mine met his wife that way. That's not a bad idea. Also, it might be a good idea to check out those discussion groups at the bookstore. Yeah, if I don't meet someone, at least I might find a good book. All right, so this is the conversation. Very interesting, I consider. And we have a couple three-word phrase verbs being used. The first one basically is broke up with. That's the one we uh, have been studying like a lot. And the whole conversation actually revolves around the same idea. So um, this kind of phrase, for example, is a very common way of starting a conversation. Hay algo que a veces sucede y que es una costumbre que considero que ninguno de ustedes tiene, pero pues es bueno aclararlo de vez en cuando, que a veces consideramos o pensamos que todas las conversaciones en inglés, ¿verdad? Cuando estamos aprendiendo, nacen de preguntarle a alguien cómo está. Y no necesariamente, es, o sea, es casi como en el español, o de la misma forma debería funcionar al menos. O sea, nosotros simplemente vamos a iniciar una conversación con el tema que nos interese, ¿verdad? Poder hablar con esa persona. Y si la manera en la cual queremos iniciarla es simplemente agregando un comentario acerca de cómo nos sentimos con algo, pues es completamente correcto hacerlo. Eso es lo que sucede en esta conversación. Aquí tenemos que James, o sea, inicia con eso, ¿verdad? This is so depressing, o sea, hablando acerca de que le parece que la situación, o sea, es muy, eh, ¿cómo sería? Muy triste, digamos, ¿sí? Entonces, y pues, o sea, que no ha tenido una cita, ¿verdad? Desde que terminó aparentemente con la última persona que estaba saliendo, quien es Angela. And then the whole conversation goes around the same, you know, talking about how um, James can get to meet someone so he can have um, like dates or get to know somebody. All right. Now I would like to hear how you guys are going to be um, developing this conversation. And I would like to know who can be the first two people on practicing it. So who is willing to go first? Okay, Joel, and who may join Joel right now for the practice? Emma, very good. So Joel and Emma, whenever you guys feel ready, you may start the practice of this conversation. Okay, ladies first. All right. Okay, thank you. This is so depressing. I haven't had a date since Angela broke up with me. What can I do? What about looking through the personal ads on the internet? That's how I met Amy. 
Actually, I've tried that, but the people you met are always different from what you expect. Well, why don't you join an online dating service? A friend of mine met his wife that way. Anda el, gato por, anda, anda el gato por ahí, se llama. Okay. <laughs> no, just kidding. That's not a, a bad idea. Also, it might be a good idea to check out those discussion graphs at the bookstore. Yeah, if I don't meet someone, at least I might find a good book. Yeah. Right, very good. There we go. That's a really good way to develop the conversation. Nice. Thank you very much. Now, what about we have uh, Melissa and Beatrice? So, Melissa and Beatrice, would you guys be willing to do the next couple on developing the conversation? Okay. All right. Okay, so teacher. Whenever you're ready. Okay. This uh... is so depressing. I haven't had a day since Angela broke with broke up with me. What can I do? What about looking through the personal ads or the internet? On the internet. That's how I meet Amy. Actually, I would try that. But the people you meet are always different from what you expect. Well, why don't you join an, an online dating service? I, a friend of mine meet his wife that way. That's not a bad idea. Also, I mean, be a good idea to check out those discussion groups at the bookstore. bookstore. Yeah, if I don't meet someone, at least I may find a good a good book. Good book. All right. So I, I went for the same when I was reading it the first time. And still today, I had a problem when I got there. I was reading, I might find a good look. I mean, tiene sentido en mi, en mi mente, al menos cuando me equivoqué la primera vez. O sea, me pareció, pues, normal, ¿verdad? Que después sea good look, porque está hablando acerca de, ajá, buscar pareja. Entonces, creí que sí era good look, pero luego tuve que ver dos veces antes para poder asegurarme que era good book. Pero bueno, a ver, un detallito nada más es que siento que estamos pronunciando estas dos palabras, meet, perdón, met y meet, de formas distintas. Sí, el, cuando solamente tenemos una E, está en su forma del pasado, este se va a pronunciar solo como met, ¿sí? Y cuando tenemos las dos, que sería, ¿verdad?, la forma en el presente, este se va a pronunciar como meet. Bueno, pero vamos a ver qué tal nos va con Evelyn y Daniel. So, Evelyn and Daniel, whenever you guys feel ready, you can go ahead and develop this conversation. Ok, teacher. Good night, everybody. Ok. This is so depressing. I haven't had a day since Angela broke, broke up with me. What can I do? What, what about looking through the personal ad on the internet? That's how I met Amy. Actually, I've tried that. But the people you meet are always different from what you expect. Well, why don't you join an online dating service? A friend of mine met his wife that way. That's not a bad idea. Also, it might be a good idea to check out those discussion groups at the bookstore. Yeah, if I don't meet someone, at least I may find a good book. Right, very good. So the only only one word also that we are having a little bit of trouble with is going to be might. Sí, esta la que utilizamos para hablar acerca de posibilidad, ¿verdad? Este es um, uno de los verbos modales de los de los eh, alrededor de siete principales de los verbos modales y que o sea lo que expresa es una posibilidad en la cual no necesariamente tenemos control, sí, eso no sé si en algún momento ustedes se los habían ya explicado, que, o sea, might, por ejemplo, cuando hablamos de could, 
o can, um, esos dos son también para expresar posibilidad, pero en ese caso nosotros tenemos algo de control, ¿verdad? Sobre lo que podría pasar. Por ejemplo, si alguien me dice, um, I could go to the party, significa que o sea, yo podría ir a la fiesta, o I can go to the party, yo puedo ir a la fiesta. Eso, o sea, esta persona controla, ¿verdad? La, al final de, de cuentas, la decisión que pueda tomar. Pero, diferente, el might. Might depende de otra situación, depende de alguien más. No necesariamente de mí o de, o de ti. Sino que, por ejemplo, podría ser, if the match doesn't take place, I might go to the party. Or, if I leave work early, I might go to the party. Entonces, depende, ¿verdad? De esas otras situaciones. La primera, o sea, si el partido al final no se da, o sea, si no terminamos jugando, yo podría ir a la fiesta. O si salimos temprano del trabajo también, podría ir a la fiesta. ¿Por qué? Porque eso depende de alguien más. No depende necesariamente ni de mí ni de ti, sino que es una situación, ¿verdad? Aparte. Por lo tanto, might es uh, muy comúnmente utilizado cuando se trata de cosas que tienen que ver con el clima. Siempre que hablamos acerca de, por ejemplo, la posibilidad de lluvia o si puede haber cualquier situación de, um, uh, que tenga que ver con el clima o cosas que nosotros no controlamos, utilizamos might. ¿sí? Para decir que podría llover en inglés, yo voy a decir it might rain. No necesariamente it could rain. ¿sí? Porque si ustedes dicen it could or it can rain, eso se refiere a, o sea, más bien a una posibilidad, algo que sí, o sea, Sí, puede llover, pero might es más bien utilizado porque ustedes o ninguno de nosotros tiene control sobre um, lo que podría pasar, ¿verdad? Con situaciones del clima. Bueno, then another section that I find very interesting from this conversation is the fact that these people are mentioning um, some personal ads on the internet. This is a way, I don't know if you guys know about this, But this is how some people used to get to date. Instead of like going on places like Messenger, which is something that exists for, since a very long time ago. Um, it's a predecessor to Skype. Uh, instead of going on that, instead of going obviously on Facebook because it, was, it didn't exist back then. Instead of going on MySpace or, or places like that, people will normally just add themselves like uh, when we talk about ads estamos hablando acerca de comerciales ¿verdad? so personal ads will be that you are well single and you put yourself on the yellow pages sí, básicamente así podríamos entenderlo this is something that used to happen on the internet so you will put a description of yourself like i'm this old or i currently have like this amount of, of years on my storage I do this and this and that, and these are my, my tastes, like the things I like to do, the things I don't like to do, and you will put yourself on the internet just for other people to see that information and probably contact you if they wanted to. Somehow, like Tinder, but in a way more public form. So that's something that caught my attention, and then the other thing that caught my attention was the fact that Um, this is another way in which people will be willing to go ahead and get somebody to date with back in the day. And it was the fact that they were going to discussion groups at bookstores. Así que esto, de hecho, en español, la verdad, me recuerda bastante a algo que una vez vi, un chiste, que decía, o sea, que Tinder es para, para rookies, que los, los de verdad van a la sección, ¿verdad?, de um, vestidos de bodas en Facebook y ahí pueden encontrar a las mujeres divorciadas y calificar eh, en las edades y todo lo que, um, la disponibilidad que hay. Pero bueno, eso no es lo importante. Lo importante es más o menos poder entender, ¿verdad? Cómo algunas cosas sucedían antes cuando no había quizá tanto desarrollo de las páginas en internet y cómo ahora las cosas pueden ser tan contrastantes. O sea que, pues sí, ¿verdad? Antes eh, no era que le mandaban una reacción en... en um, en Insta y esperaban a ver si contestaba o algo, sino que directamente, o sea, se publicaba la gente en internet, soy esta persona, tengo estos años, hago esto y lo otro, me gusta esto y lo otro, y este es mi número por si me quieres contactar, podemos salir. Entonces, 
that was kind of wild. Ese tipo de cosas obviamente no pasaron acá, porque pues en nuestro país, ¿verdad? Eh, principalmente pues tampoco había tanto acceso al internet y ese tipo de cosas, o sea, son situaciones que no se dan, pero sí es algo que se supone que solía suceder um, con el internet en el principio, ¿verdad? De los días de, del internet. Pero bueno, so that's something that was kind of interesting in my opinion. Um, do you guys have any questions regarding this conversation? Any word you don't understand? Hay cualquier palabra que ustedes no hayan logrado entender al 100% de las que están en esta conversación o estamos listos para la siguiente sección? Okay. Teacher. Mm -hmm. Ads. Who is the meaning? Ads. Este es un acortado para una palabra bastante más larga que sería advertisements. Sí, advertisements. Advertisements se refiere a comerciales, pero para que sea mucho más sencillo, ¿verdad? Se va a utilizar de forma recortada solo ads. Advertisements es el nombre completo y se refiere a comerciales. Y ads es como más o menos lo vamos a ver, um, ya sea, bueno, de hecho casi que en todos lados, hoy en día se ve como ads, pero todavía existe y se da el uso, ¿verdad? De la palabra completa de advertisements. Esa no es una que se haya eliminado, sino que para la facilidad de la comunicación, como ya les he dicho en varias ocasiones en inglés, se trata mucho acerca de eso, ¿verdad? De acelerar las conversaciones, de que las cosas sucedan de forma bastante fluida. Entonces, ads se, se tomó a bien para no necesariamente tener que estar diciendo siempre advertisements, 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 sino que solo se dice ads. So, personal ads sería los um, comerciales personales. Ok, um, diferente, Mucho claro. Bien. ¿Sí? No, no, es otra pregunta. Pero dígame, continúe, no, dígame, no hay problema, pregunta. no, dígame. No, le iba a preguntar por at least, pero, pero igual, usted todavía estaba explicando lo anterior. Ok, no, solo les iba a decir diferente a esta otra, ¿verdad? Que es at con doble D, que esta sí. se refiere a agregar. ¿sí? Agregar, cabrón. Ad, exactamente. Si, por ejemplo, ustedes están en, en Facebook y lo utilizan en inglés, ahí desaparecerá, ¿verdad? Add friend, entonces es con doble D, entonces esta es agregar, pero ads con una D nada más y la S se refiere a las, uh, a los comerciales. Um, ahora, lo que, eso que estaba mencionando usted, de at least, sería con T, sí, at least, at least, y eso se refiere, ¿verdad? A al menos, at least, sí, pero eso sería con una T, at least. Um, Melissa, okay. no sé si iba a mencionar algo más. No, teacher, thank you. Ok. Um, ¿También usted, Daniel? No, solo ese teacher, at least. All right. Además, quiere decir, uh, al, menos. al menos. Al menos, perdón, al menos. Mm -hmm. okay. At least, al menos, okay. sí. Okay, Por teacher. ejemplo, mm -hmm. si ustedes tienen un, um, una situación, una fiesta, digamos, ¿verdad? No sé por qué ando hablando tanto de fiestas hoy, pero digamos que tenemos una fiesta. Entonces, y pues la persona encargada de traer las sodas olvidó, um, qué sé yo, o vino tarde, ¿sí? O sea, la persona encargada de traer las sodas vino tarde y ya estábamos casi a punto de partir el pastel. Y durante todo este rato hemos tenido que estar inventando, dándole a la gente agua, viendo si, hacíamos, eh, si bajábamos mango, si hacíamos un fresco de mango, o sea, viendo qué inventábamos, ¿verdad? Pero cuando esa persona llega... Sí, le llegó antes del pastel, entonces le podemos decir eso, ¿verdad? At least you came before the cake. Sí, al menos viniste antes de que partiéramos el pastel. O sea, entonces ahí estaríamos utilizando como al menos. Y esa es la forma en la cual por lo general se utiliza, ¿verdad? At least. También existe otra, o sea, en la que se, se podría decir, por ejemplo, that you have to get, in, in this case, from the platform, You have to get at least 80% completion. If not, you are not available or suitable 
to move into the next module. Entonces esa sería otra de las maneras o formas en las cuales podemos aplicar, ¿verdad? At least. O sea, debes conseguir o lograr al menos un 80% en el avance o en, el, en los logros de la plataforma. Si no, no vas a ser apto para poder pasar al siguiente módulo. So that's another of the uses for at least. Muy bien. No es, o sea, no es como un uso distinto. A lo que me refiero es que, en, o sea, cómo se podría aplicar, ¿verdad? Decir que, o sea, debes llegar al menos a esto, o en el caso primero que puse el, el ejemplo de lo de la fiesta, o sea, es porque, pues sí, ¿verdad? Al menos algo eh, específico, un momento específico no sucedió antes que tú llegaras, o sea, o, ajá, no, no, no terminó de salir del todo mal la situación. Entonces, um, si alguien tiene un accidente y, qué sé yo, en la bicicleta, si ¿sí? se, le, se le arruinó la llanta, la bicicleta, completamente, entonces tú puedes decir, but at least you're okay, ¿sí? Al menos tú estás bien. Esas serían las formas en las cuales podemos utilizar el at least. All right, so this is the next one, and it's making suggestions. This is something I love to learn and talk about because it's um, very useful and we're probably going to need it all the time. So making suggestions comes along with four different forms in which you can use it. Now, the first one is the simplest one and probably my favorite one with gerunds. Making use of gerunds, remember gerundios, son esos, esas palabras o esa forma de conjugar los verbos que en español no existe y que por lo tanto no podría ser eh, siempre ¿verdad? traducida de una manera lógica. So that's what we are dealing with here. The first example then goes as following. What about looking through the personal ads? So this, when you make suggestions, of course, normally what you do is that you ask a question in the form of the suggestion. Sí, por lo general lo que sucede es que, o sea, hacemos una pregunta y en esa pregunta se incluye, ¿verdad? La sugerencia. No siempre van a ser iguales, o sea, no siempre será de esta forma. Um, por ejemplo, podemos decir, you can try looking, ¿sí? You can try looking through the personal ads. Esa sería una, una oración normal, a statement. Pero acá tenemos una pregunta. What about looking through the personal ads? You can replace the what for the how as well. You can ask, how about looking through the personal ads? So those could be ways in which you can suggest someone to do something, which you consider to be a good idea. Now, the other one could be, how you thought about, have you thought, sorry, have you thought about joining? Here, you are um, offering a suggestion in the form of a possibility as well. Have you thought? Ahí no tenemos una sugerencia directa de decirle, ¿verdad? Eh, ¿Deberías hacer esto o haz esto? Sino que más bien consultarle acerca de las ideas que esta persona podría haber tenido. Have you thought about eh, joining um, this or that? Okay, so uh, that's for uh, the gerund form of the suggestions. Now, with infinitives, we have the basically the same form. When we use infinitives, it's basically the same. The only difference is that when we use gerunds, we're going to have the ing form of the verb. And with the infinitive, we're only going to have to add the particle to before the main verb. And it should sound something as following. It might be a good idea to check out those discussion groups at the bookstore. So here we are offering the suggestion. It might be a good idea. Si sí, estamos incluyendo lo verdad como una, o sea, ahí es donde tomas lugar la sugerencia, ¿sí? It might be a good idea. Podría ser una buena idea. Después de eso, es cuando ya necesitamos incluir verdad el infinitivo. Um, claro, también se puede decir, it might be a good idea looking Uh, at, o sea, que no sería check out, sino que sería looking at, ¿sí? Looking at those discussion groups uh, at the bookstore. Pero, si lo vamos a dejar con un infinitivo, sería entonces de esa manera, ¿verdad? It might be a good idea to check out those discussion groups at the bookstore. Or something as the next one. One thing you could do, ¿sí? One thing you could do 
is aquí por el motivo, el, perdón, el motivo por el cual quizá no sea siempre necesario utilizar eh, este to de acá es por la cercanía que se tiene con el verbo modal. Una cosa que no sé si ustedes, o sea, honestamente no sé hasta, hasta qué tal uh, grado conocemos los verbos modales, pero una cosa que sucede con ellos es que cuando se utilizan verbos modales, no hay necesidad de colocar esa partícula to entre un verbo y otro, porque los verbos modales, o sea, son raros y no necesariamente, ¿verdad? Se necesita que, lo, que el verbo principal de las oraciones tenga una forma distinta. O sea, puede ser el verbo tal y como es, sin tanto problema, ¿verdad? Estando justo al lado del verbo modal. Con el resto de los verbos cualquiera o con el resto de auxiliares cualquiera que ustedes puedan conocer, pues ahí sí, ¿verdad? Será necesario en muchas ocasiones que se tenga cuidado de utilizar la forma correcta del verbo, de utilizar la conjugación correcta del mismo, pero con los modales casi siempre, más que todo si están cerca de, del verbo, no va a ser necesario utilizar la partícula to. Así que eso es lo que sucede acá, por eso es que tú aparece entre paréntesis y por eso es que, o sea, es opcional, ¿verdad? Si lo quieres agregar o no. So one thing you could do is go and then you can offer any suggestion you want. One thing you could do is go. Uh, then the next one is with modal verbs. Aquí lo tenemos ya mucho más específico con los verbos modales. Sí, estos, o sea, son, de hecho, desde hace rato, ¿verdad? Los estoy mencionando. So with modal verbs, maybe you could go, sí, maybe you could go. Quizá podrías ir, sí, aquí tenemos entonces la posibilidad. Recordamos que les dije, could, eh, se utiliza cuando la persona tiene control sobre la situación. O sea, cuando yo puedo decidir si hacer o no algo. En cambio, might es cuando yo no tengo ninguna posibilidad de controlar lo que suceda. Entonces, aquí por eso utilizamos could. Maybe you could go, quizá podrías ir. O sea, ya que es una... Una sugerencia, ¿verdad? No le voy a decir you should o you have to go to this specific place, sino que could, ¿sí? Un poco más suave, un poco más amable, quizá podrías ir a hacer esto o lo otro. In this case is maybe you could go to a chat room on the internet. So going in a chat room is just connecting on a specific place space with more people where you can get to share your ideas you can get to talk to others so that's one of the suggestions and the next one is going to be with a negative question esta es una de las favoritas de hecho de muchas personas en la que le dices por qué no intentas o sea por qué no sí por qué no haces esto por qué no haces lo otro why don't you say sí, why don't you why don't you join a dating service Why don't you join a dating service? ¿Por qué no te unes a un servicio de citas? Why don't you? Entonces, este sería, ¿verdad? La forma negativa o con una pregunta negativa. Una vez más, vamos a hacer una peque un pequeño repaso. With gerunds, con los gerundios. Tenemos que es, what about looking? With ing there. What about looking? ¿Sí? Then we have, how have you thought about joining? Joining and then you offer any suggestion then with the infinitives it might be a good idea to check out it might be a good idea to check out here we have a phrasal verb actually este sería un verbo fraseal eh, no es necesario verdad que se utilicen siempre pero aquí pues se dio el caso this is a phrasal verb entonces es uh, un momento en el cual también tenemos siendo verdad tenemos el uso acá de algo similar a lo que estábamos tratando en esta misma clase Then we have one thing you could do is, una cosa que podrías hacer es, and then you can add the verb, any verb you want. Um, the next one is, maybe you could go, maybe with modal verbs, maybe you could go, or maybe you can go, you can use that one. Also, you can use maybe you should go, maybe you should go, esa es una más directa, ¿verdad? Una sugerencia como con un poquito más de orden que sugerencia um, maybe you um, may go ese es más un estilo de sugerencia pasiva ¿sí? quizá puede decir pero es un poco más como que no te estoy sugiriendo que lo hagas directamente pero es una opción que existe por ahí maybe you may go 
And the last one is, why don't you? Sí, why don't you? Eso es, mañana vamos a estar eh, proponiendo nuestras propias eh, maneras de usarlo. Sí, recordarles solamente eso, ¿verdad? Mañana tenemos clase también, será la última de la semana. Eh, luego, pues ya solamente nos van a, a quedar las cuatro pendientes para la próxima semana y estaríamos culminando con el módulo. Pero eh, el día de mañana, espero que también... Si tenemos el chance, la oportunidad, que logremos conseguir una frase diferente a la que hemos visto hoy para poder contestar esa pregunta, ¿verdad? How are you doing? ¿Sí? O sea, ¿cómo te sientes? Algo que sea un tanto creativo y que de alguna manera tal vez pueda representar, ¿verdad? Cómo ustedes se llegan a sentir en un momento específico. So, that will be all for today, guys. I will be seeing you tomorrow. And thank you, thank you very much for the attention mostly for this evening. Um, tomorrow, I hope to get you guys some more participation, some more active uh, practice. And uh, well, that's it then. Thanks. Have a really good night and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye, teacher. Good night. See you tomorrow, everybody. Good night, everyone.